So where do our moral inclinations come from? I mean, is this is this hardwired yep, into evolution. our evolutionary yeah, history? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, how, sure. how so? Well, because um, if you just take like we should in selfish gene model, we should just be uh, maximizing our utility and selfishly hoarding all the resources. If I do that, you have the same motive. And so we're going to have a conflict. So it's actually better for me if I don't do that. If I actually be nice to you and you be nice to me, we, we both benefit. There's reciprocity. There's reciprocity. So uh, Bob Trivers and others worked this out in the 60s and 70s, the mathematics of kin selection and reciprocal altruism. So we can get out to your kin and kind of why we would be nice to people who are either genetically related to us or we spend a lot of time with them because you know there's going to be payback and so on. So the idea is that we evolve these emotions Emotions are, are, are proxies to drive behavior. Uh, so you have the emotion of lust to drive you to have sex to propagate the species. Love to lead to pair bonding with oxytocin and dopamine and all that good stuff. Uh, so that you have a longer term uh, commitment to raise you know, long, slow growing offspring and so on. Uh, you have uh, jealousy for mate guarding. You have anger so that if somebody does try to exploit, if you try to exploit me, you know, I'm going to pop you in the nose and then you're less likely to do it next time. And therefore, cultivating a reputation of being a badass, like, you better not mess with me, because if you do, I'm going to come, okay, all right, uh, let's be nice to Shermer, because, you know, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, and, and then revenge, you know, the idea of revenge is, is important, so that you're not exploited, because there are bullies, there are people that, you know, on the spectrum of, you know, the, toward the dark, darker right. end, so you, you, we have to deal with bullies really by being hard asses about it. So, so you're basically you're saying that morality, our, our moral instincts are, it's all kind of, it, it's their emotional responses. They probably are originating at some unconscious level. It's not a matter of, you know, we're sort of trying to reason this out. And what should I do? Is this the right thing or is that the right thing? You're saying that's usually not the way we well, make moral layered. decisions? Well, it's layered. So the moral emotions, the sentiments, the, what we're born with, what we get that starts at three months. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that comes with the package of, with everything else. I mean, the, the moralization sense is certainly one of the most important characteristics of being human. And if you look at police blotters, 90% of homicides are moralistic in nature. The guy scratched my car. He insulted me in front of my girlfriend. You know, he stole, you know, he, he was, you know, he insulted me and, you know, th this kind of thing. Or, you know, the ISIS people, you know, they're, they're doing, you know, the, the West is evil. We have to strike back. You know, it's, they're, they're moralistic in nature. Very few homicides are instrumental. You know, when, when a burglar burgles your home, they don't want you to be home. They'd rather you weren't home because they don't want to fight. They don't want to, you know, they, they, they want to maximize their utility by getting your stuff w with the least amount of violence as possible. It's why pirates fly the Jolly Roger skull and crossbones flag. It's a costly signal that says we are badasses and we're coming to take your stuff. So you should just give it to us without a fight. And that's what the flag did. Now, every once in a while, you have to actually do it so that people know this guy is a real badass, right? So, so Heather, how much do you think science can explain our moral inclinations? Well, I think there's a lot, of, I mean, evolution, there's a lot of great explanations about why we behave the way we do because of evolution. But, you know, we're also born, you know, there's individual differences. And we have these innate impulses, these innate desires to, let's say, go for immediate pleasure, immediate reward, right? And these are structures deeper in our brain, evolutionarily older structures, like your reptilian brain that are that are driving you for. So, you know, let's say to procreate, okay, you have the drive, I want to rape that person, right? Then you have a more recently developed prefrontal cortex, thinks about the future consequences of your actions and says, you know what, maybe that's not a good idea. Maybe reputation management, you know, like people will behave more immorally when nobody's watching than if they think they're going to be talked about. And that's why all these things now, like, um, bottom-up kind of reputation things like like uber or um, you know everything facebook now it's like you we are be forcing each other to behave in more moral ways because people are going to talk about us and we want to be liked and that gives us resources so so all that is kind of getting into it. but there are individual differences in terms of how much a person has the capacity to control those innate reptilian drives through immediate pleasure or avoidance of pain. When, if you're just following those, you know, Freud would call them your id impulses, then a person would not necessarily behave in the most moral way. And that's why teenagers, for example, like your prefrontal cortex, the kind of brake system that thinks about the future consequences of your actions, it's not fully developed until about the age of 25. And so they have much more difficulty, you know, not acting on impulse, not acting on those drives. And just like that, there are people, there's a certain um, modification in, in, in the genome that affects serotonin receptors in the brain. And people who have a certain shorter allele for the serotonin receptor 
will end up acting out more impulsively. They can't control their impulses. Now, if you're looking at making moral decisions, this all plays into it. So it's not just about how we've evolved as a species. It's, there really are individual differences in how a person has the capacity to make moral decisions, how they're not just overwhelmed either by their emotions or lack of emotions. So are, are there certain aspects of our morality that science simply cannot explain? Christian? I would, I guess I'll be provocative tonight. Uh, I, don't, I don't think, strictly speaking, science can explain any aspect of morality. Um, so that's, that's very... You didn't read my <laughs> book yet. Uh, sorry. <laughs> 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 oh, no, I'm in trouble now. Um, <laughs> so I say that very carefully. Uh, so sure, science can give us lots of insights into explaining why certain people did this action as opposed to this action, um, whether certain people are capable of this as opposed to that. But when I think about morality, I'm thinking about the prescriptive, <clears throat> the ethical, the normative. I'm thinking about um, do not lie, with some exceptions. Um, do not cheat, do not steal, um, help others in need. And these are principles and rules or guidelines um, that tell us what we ought to do, what we should do. And to my simple-minded mind, that's not something that I'm going to be able to learn directly from scientific investigation. But, but isn't it just like, is it, there's moral relativism, relativism. So like, there's no, I mean, maybe you think there is, but I don't know if there's a hard and fast rule of that these are these moral things that exist out there. And, you know, and so in that sense. Sure, sure. Um, so, so first of all, uh, in the philosophical world, uh, <clears throat> moral relativism is one view. It's very controversial still. Um, and surprisingly, actually, most philosophers reject moral relativism. This is a kind of interesting sociological observation about philosophy, uh, either because they think morality is grounded in a higher being, a divine being, or because they're quite comfortable talking about morality just being objective and existing on its own without a creator uh, as an as a, uh, objective feature of reality, just like the laws of physics or, or the laws of nature in general. Um, so we can get into that debate about whether morality is objective or relative. But even if you um, think about morality in a more relative way, presumably you think according to your moral code, certain things are right and certain things are wrong. <clears throat> certain things are good or bad. So whatever that happens to be, <clears throat> those moral principles relative to your moral code are not going to be such that you can just read them off the scientific results. <clears throat> are, now are, you, are you saying that the basis of that moral code is cultural or is it, is it personal? Is it just something that, that each of us comes up with? Um, <clears throat> So at the end of the day, each of us has to make a personal decision as to what moral code we're going to hold. Um, but there's a further question of where morality comes from as a matter of fact. Um, so some people think morality comes from a divine being. A divine being just uh, lays out a moral code for us to follow. In fact, that's probably the predominant view in, in the West and throughout our, our history has been uh, kind of divine command theory um, where God's in charge of morality. Others think that the deeper truth about morality, as I said, is just that there is a natural law or a set of moral truths that we are able to tap into using either a conscience or our reason. Um, and, we, and we can judge our moral opinions as true or false in light of that uh, more basic code. Or there's this um, more cultural view which says morality is just a product of the particular culture we live in. There's a kind of American morality, there's, there's ISIS morality, there's these different moralities, and there's no one true morality or correct morality beyond just what different cultures subscribe to.